bad money. That's my title for this segment. Once again, Fedhead Ben Bernanke showed no backbone on shrinking his balance sheet or letting rates float up. Nothing to defend the dollar. All of this in front of the Economics Club of Washington. And it was today. Take a listen for yourself on this one. Well, they can't go much further down. <laughs> Obviously, the uh, Federal Open Market Committee, which meets next week, will continue to look at the economy. We'll have to try to update our outlook, look at financial conditions, and move from there. But, you know, right now we are still looking at the extended period. All right, extended period, maybe till the end of the century. Let's see what our distinguished guests have to say about this. Joining us now, Vince Reinhardt, resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, former director of the Federal Reserve Board's Division of Monetary Affairs. And we welcome back my old pal Richard Ron, senior fellow at the Cato Institute. Vince Reinhardt, Bernanke missed a great opportunity today to show some backbone. And you know what? I don't think this guy knows how to tighten or wants to tighten. I think he's easy money helicopter Ben Vince, and he just will not get the job done. You agree? Uh, no. <laughs> I think he does. <laughs> Obviously not. That was a leading question. Nah. Uh, he, he's got a dual objective, maximum employment, stable prices. The unemployment rate's 10%. He's got a conventional forecast that says inflation's headed down for a while. Therefore, that gives him some scope to stay accommodative. See, Richard, Ron, once again, I mean, it's sort of the uh, monetary equivalent to the taxpayer rights filibuster against the TARP uh, bailout and the TARP slush fund. We got a monetary slush fund, Richard. We're buying all manner of mortgages and credit card backed and automobile backed. There is no end to what the Fed is doing. And he had a perfect opportunity after a better unemployment report to make his statement, Richard. Ron, what's your take on this? Are we ever going to defend the dollar in this country in our lifetime? Well, it is discouraging. I mean, the case is, if you think about your own situation, if you could borrow money for free or close to free, you're not going to be anywhere near as careful as how you spend that money if you have to pay some reasonable amount of interest for it. Well, what we're seeing here is a huge misallocation of resources. Uh, the Fed continues to buy these mortgage-backed securities. Uh, we're not allowing house prices to actually fall to the point where you get back to equilibrium. Uh, we had this endless attempt just to buy time, and this is going to end very, very badly, I feel. What do you mean? You mean, uh, when you say it's going to end badly, are you talking another bubble? I mean, Mr. Bernanke was Alan Greenspan's bubble co-pilot during the first part of this decade. Is that what you're talking about, Richard? Well, we're already seeing bubbles. We've got the stock market. I think it's in a bubble situation again. Uh, commodities are rising around the world. This will probably even increase, uh, these commodity prices will increase even a greater rate. And you've got the situation where as a result of the falling dollar because of all this money the Fed has been putting out, that foreigners can come in and buy real U.S. assets very inexpensively. Right. We're giving away the store. Right. And this is it's not going to be good for our future and particularly our children's future. Vince Reinhardt, look, um, Look, you're the smartest monetary guy I know. Look, I've just got to ask you this. The longer Mr. Bernanke waits, Vince, this is my hypothesis, the longer Mr. Bernanke waits, the tougher and harsher the monetary exit plan is going to have to be, Vince. And I think some point this year, and my guess this coming year, 2010, it's going to be sooner rather than later because I think the economy is a little better than all the pessimists think. I'm in the 3 to 4% camp. Uh, you're not going to tighten by quarters. The bond market, the gold market, the dollar market is going to force the Fed to tighten by half a point or three quarters of a point, Vince. And I'm telling you, that's going to wreak havoc on the stock market when it happens. What's your take on that? The longer he waits, the tougher it's going to be. No. I think the best thing that can happen is they have to be symmetric in their policy actions. They were very aggressive in lowering rates. If they could be seen as equally aggressive in raising rates, that would send a good signal. But why don't you start now? You don't start now because the unemployment rate's 10 percent. But falling. That, but falling. Did you see Kevin Hassett from the American Enterprise Institute? Your got, colleague, I got the office down the hall. Okay. All right. You know what? Kevin is a real smart guy, and he thinks the economy is picking up. He thinks from deep recessions come stronger than expected recoveries. He thinks we've seen the unemployment rate peak. I mean, this could have given Bernanke a hook 
The whole world was ready for him to make a statement today on defending the dollar and uh, restraining the balance sheet, and he didn't have the courage to do it, Vince. That's why I don't think he should be reconfirmed. I really don't. Okay, so Larry, you're putting me in a very unique position over the last couple of weeks, and that is actually defending Ben Bernanke. Yes. That, that, that is, <laughs> hasn't I happened. This. I love this. Okay, but let me, let me try to channel uh, his view, okay, just to be fair to the guy. Uh, look, the unemployment rate is high. As long as it is that high, he's got some room to maneuver because inflation isn't a near-term risk. Uh, he's got very accommodative policy, but meanwhile, you got to play the hand you're dealt, and you're dealt with a hand in which an administration is doing things that is detrimental to growth. Ah, you're coming back. Both of you coming back. When we do come back, I want to take Vince Reinhardt, the great Vince Reinhardt, who is the smartest monetary analyst around, but I want to ask Richard Ron, room to maneuver, quote unquote, what does that mean? Is that more monetary tinkering, fine tuning, and central planning? And coming up all right, we're discussing Ben Bernanke's uh, speech today for the Washington Economics Club. My view, he had no monetary backbone whatsoever. After Friday's good jobs report, people expected him to hint at a tightening and restraint of balance sheet. It wasn't there. That's probably bullish as all get out for the stock market in the short run. Easy money, liquidity. But it may not be so bullish in the long run. We've got Vince Reinhardt and Richard Ron. Richard Ron, you've already said you think he's developing a bubble. Let me ask you a couple quickie questions here. First of all, in your judgment, where should the Fed funds target be right now? Well, I'm not going to say precisely, but clearly a lot higher than it is now. And he's got to move, I think, much quicker. Because look at the situation. You just pointed out we're likely to have stronger growth over the next couple of quarters. And then suddenly the Fed will see they're back into an inflationary situation. They'll be forced to increase interest rates. And then at the end of the year, the Bush tax cuts expire mm. end of 2010 and I can see us really in the soup in the beginning of 2011 because you have higher interest rates it's going to hit the housing market and the um, automobiles other consumer durables at the same time you've got a huge tax increase that's this a is really, madness yeah that's a very important uh, supply side uh, view uh, Vince Reinhardt let me ask you about this now I know you disagree but I'm here to tell you as the unemployment rate goes down in December and down in January and down in February and down in March. That's my view. I don't think it's going to crash, but I think it's going to edge down and job creation is going to continue to edge up in small and large business. He's going to have to go halves and three quarters. And then to Richard's point, on top of that, as we get to year end 2010, we got tax rate increases. Who knows? Not only the Bush tax uh, hikes are going to go, the Bush tax cuts are going to be reversed, but we may have big health care. What are you going to do then, Vince Reinhardt? That's a real pickle that Mr. Bernanke is going to fall into if he doesn't make his adjustments sooner instead of later. So the missed opportunity today was not talking about how you would exit, not starting to exit, explaining how he would get all that really bad stuff off the balance yes, sheet, that, working with Treasury. Yes, that, but he doesn't have to do it right away. No. He just has to explain an exit strategy. You know, he's doing, Larry, he's doing these experimental the, reverse RPs. In other words, he's, dra he's doing this experimental cash drain. He's pulling money out of the economy in a tiny amount He with the dealers in New York, with the banks. They're doing a rehearsal. Right. Why not emphasize that, Vince? Why not emphasize exactly how he's going to get out? That would have sent a better message. Okay. Today was a stale Bernanke message of ease, ease, helicopter, helicopter. Richard Ron is right. Bubble, bubble, bubble. So, Larry, two points. First is, when did he do his experiment? He did his experiment just before he was testifying before the Senate. Right. So he understands the, the, the role of message. But he didn't Second, follow through, Vince. Here's he didn't the, here's the, okay, here's the issue for you. You want somebody other than Ben Bernanke? Who would this president appoint? I am appoint? so glad you and asked. And who would this Senate confirm? I am confirm? so glad you so asked. So you have to think. I do. Among I have the, the man. Among the Senate. I have the man. Uh, I have yes, the man. I, we know I'm guys who could do it. No. But who would All right. I this come, president appoint? I have thought long and hard on this. And my choice right now is Paul Volcker. Paul Volcker, the economic advisor that Obama won't listen to and take his advice. I'm telling you, he could do it. He could do it. And you've got young Kevin Warsh in there to help Volcker every day. Make Warsh the deputy chairman and clean house. I got to get out of here. But you asked, and that's my answer. Paul Volcker, the greatest central banker of our generation. Vince Reinhardt and Richard Ron. Coming up.